Hello everyone, welcome to this, that, and the other. Um, boy, what a, uh, this is, just, this game today is just like deja vu. Um, I don't, I can't count how many times I've seen Michigan State be on ESPN, it's a late night game, and they end up losing uh right before the clock strikes midnight um long drawn out game you know lose it like i said losing in the final minutes um just these very annoying ass commercials especially uh the monday night football commercial with uh jason kelsey the not amount of times they played that commercial made me want to put a bullet through my head um so uh, I don't want any I don't want any comments about that, but um, it was dread. It was just a. It's always it's typical ESPN, just an absolutely dreadful broadcast, and uh, it was ACC Network, which is owned by ESPN, whatever. But um, that is just so typical. Uh, I remember the Arizona State game several years ago. Same thing. We really got to start winning some of these games, uh, especially late at night, because it's just demoralizing to lose a game. And, you know, you have to try to get some sleep after a game like that. It's just it's just a pain in the ass, if you know what I mean. Um, and it just pisses you off, right, quite frankly. Um, one thing that really pissed me off was Aiden Child's decision at the end of the game. What are you doing? Uh, it's second and one. You throw the ball deep into triple, double coverage at least, maybe triple coverage. It gets intercepted in the back of the end zone. Um, not to mention the fact that Aiden Childs really hasn't proven the ability to connect on those kind of passes yet. So, again, I don't want you guys to think I'm out on Aiden Childs. I'm not. But today was uh, that decision. That decision overall... I guess you could say had a decent game. He still had several very questionable throws, a couple balls that almost got intercepted, and then the one in the third quarter that did get interception that led to a touchdown for Boston College. Um, and, uh, you know, you watch Aiden Childs, and you can tell he's a special player. He's got ability, and, uh, you know, he's only 18 years old, so he has... He has all the potential in the world to be an elite quarterback, maybe even a first round NFL, you know, something like Michael Panic, something like that. But, you know, these are just painful moments you have to go through, I guess. But that decision, I just, when I first saw he was going deep, I was thinking he must have a guy wide open. No, turns out there were, he, you know, he was double covered and uh, he forced it, you know, that's, that's where Aiden Childs has had probably all of his interceptions this year with him just forcing the ball um, and, you know, making making bad decisions, you know. Um, when you're a quarterback like him, you got athletic ability. You don't have to be the most – you don't have to be the most accurate passer, but you have to make good decisions. Um, if you're – even if you're passing the ball 50% – completion percentage as long as you're not throwing crucial interceptions like he's been doing then you know you should be pretty well because you can also extend the plays and you know extend plays and make uh get first downs with your with your legs and stuff like that but this was just a this was just unfortunately that was just an awful decision and I don't want to beat him up too bad because like I said not out on him. I think he can be an elite player, and I think he, I think there's a good chance that he will be an elite quarterback. But that was just an unacceptable decision, in my in my opinion. When it's second and one, you know, um, and you know, obviously, as I've said before, as I said, I think I did anyways. Four turnovers. You know, there was a short pass that he had intercepted earlier in the third quarter. Um, K. Ronald Lynch Adams, another awful decision to pull that ball to on kick return to pull it out of the end zone. 
even if he holds on to the ball, they're only getting up to the 10-yard line when if you kneel in the end zone, you get it to the 25. So in a downpour game like this, there's absolutely no excuse to bring that ball out of the end zone. And again, these are just, you know, it's just a one-time thing. You know, these guys are human. They make mistakes. So I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way. Not attacking these people. Uh, and their integrity or whatever, you know, or as people, but these were just really bad decisions today. And uh, Aiden Childs with three interceptions, no, no passing touchdowns. He did a very nice job making play, making plays with his legs today, and that's largely what kept us, you know, leading for most of the game. So, you know, that's just. Uh, that's just stuff we got to clean up. And unfortunately, now we're heading into a very tough stretch of games. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I thought overall the defense looked solid. Um, a number of sacks um, seemed like they've had, you know, they had, uh, had they got Boston College off schedule quite a bit, which is kind of what you'd expect with the weather that they had today. The, it was an absolute downpour. And in that sense, I was actually very surprised that MSU was able to move the ball and pass the ball as effectively as they as they did today. Montori Foster had some very nice catches as well as Isaiah Johnson and K. Ron Lynch Adams, you know, at moments he did have he did have some exceptional runs. And uh you know the nice thing I can at least say about this team is we really have not struggled to move the ball. We've definitely had struggles in the red zone and untimely turnovers, but I can't, I can't, I can't say that this is a stagnant offense for sure. Um, you know, we did see that busted coverage late. That was unfortunate. I have no idea whose responsibility. I think they ran kind of a crossing route and they got tangled up and their tight end was able to get, wide open I guess for a touchdown so that kind of stuff happens but um that last drive I was feeling really good about obviously <laughs> um and I already talked about K. Ron Lynch Adams I believe again just uh just an awful decision that really did impact the game um Boston College had at least at least 10 points off turnovers you know, in a low-scoring game like this thing that on this game, it was the same thing with Maryland. You know, they they could have beat they could have beaten Maryland by probably double digits if they were more sound with with the football. You know, I think they they needed to do something with Aiden Childs. I think they maybe need to rein him in a little bit um, to keep you know play it a little bit more conservative at times. Uh, I think they overall did play conservative today, but just, uh, you know, I guess it doesn't matter if you're conservative, if you're making poor decisions, uh, trying to force the ball, you know, that, that that's not going to work. That's not going to work whether you're playing aggressive or conservatively. So, um, very, you know, obviously it goes without saying a very difficult schedule coming up. Ohio State, I believe, next week. Um, Oregon after that. Iowa, then Michigan. And I actually think that, you know, MSU does have... I do think that they have a chance in those games. Um, even Ohio State, as crazy as that sounds. Um, they are at home, and I think that they're... I think it's just they're going to have to make sure that Ohio State doesn't get into a rhythm, which is not an easy thing to do. And, uh, you know, don't quote me on this because I'm certainly not predicting a win, but um, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't tell you that that game is impossible to win. Um, I think that, you know, I think this team has shown, has shown quite a bit of resiliency this year so far. So take that for what, you know, take that for what it's worth. But I do think that they do have an opportunity to win a couple games, even in this difficult stretch. I think Michigan looks like a beatable team. 
Uh, Iowa is certainly a beatable team. Ohio State is a little bit, you know, on the fringe. I think Oregon is is as well. There's certainly there's certainly a chance they could go 0 for four, but I wouldn't be surprised if they get a, if they get at least one win in this stretch. Um, so tough. Very, it's just a tough loss for the um, just for the entire um, premise of. You know, getting those, getting getting one of these these fifty fifty games are just they they are the worst when you lose them. They just they just make you feel like total total dog dog. You know what? So it's a it's just the, what it boils down to is it's a missed opportunity today, and we can't afford to have many more of those. You know, Illinois. Illinois looking is looking like a very formidable team, as is Indiana. You know, I haven't I haven't kept track of Rutgers at this point, but it's um it even even the late the the tail end of the season is not looking nearly as promising as it, as it was before the season started. So in that in that aspect, this is a very costly loss. And I still think, I, I certainly think Michigan State can beat Illinois or Indiana as well. But again, they're, they might not even, they might not be 50-50 games like, like we thought. Um, but like I said, MSU's been punching above their weight class. So I do expect them to compete with these teams coming up. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like it was last year um, where it's 56 to nothing. You know, in these kind of games, again, I could very well be wrong about that, but that's just what my gut feel. That's just what my my gut is telling me, and I sh I've certainly been wrong before. But um, this this reaction is made quite a bit. You know, several hours after the game ended, so things aren't quite as fresh for me. Uh, I kind of I've kind of moved on to the next game <laughs> uh, or to the Lions tomorrow, so. If I had done this a little earlier, I might have had a little bit more insightful video. So I apologize for that. But again, just to wrap it up, just an inferior, inferior, infuriating loss tonight uh, because I did feel like we were the best, the better team for most of the night. And uh, hopefully next year when they come to East Lansing, we can uh, get a little bit of revenge. I'm sure we can. But that's gonna that's gonna do it for this video, you guys. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe. Love to hear some comments to let to know what you thought of the game, all the aspects that I brought up. Um, make sure to keep it respectful because I won't. I'm not gonna tolerate you know trolling or anything like that. So you know, just keep it nice and uh, you know, let's be let's be adults. You know, if you want to comment on this video, I'd appreciate that. Anyways, you guys, go green. Enjoy the Lions game tomorrow. Let's hope for a win. Maybe I'll actually do my first Lions reaction uh, tomorrow once the game is over. We'll see. It's getting over at around 7 or 8 o'clock. So I think I should be able to do a little 10 or 15 minute video. Um, and again, you guys will be welcome to... Join in on the conversation. Let me know what you guys think. Um, one last note I guess I want to make is I was I was thinking about making a video in the middle of the week because I did not, since I didn't make a Prairie View video, there's no way I was going to watch that game in a million years. Um, but the injuries are just really starting to pile up. And this is just another thing that is really, you know, pissing me off is just the, you know, we, we play FAU and we have three or four major injuries at the end of the game. And it's, this is just the same old thing. It's just like the ESPN thing, you know, where we lose a game late on ESPN. It's the same thing with the injuries. It's like, we always come out of these meaningless games with major injuries with guys out for you know, the majority of the season. You got Dylan Tatum. You got 
Um, um, <laughs> you got you got the guy from Nebraska that we got quite a while ago, that receiver. Um, I can't think of his name right off hand. Uh, <laughs> um, and you got you know you got um, their offensive lineman. Um, Gavin Brocious and several several other offensive linemen, I believe, that are already out. Um, and you know, many of them are vet are veterans. You know, for you know, seniors, juniors, things like that. So, um, maybe I can. I apologize for the unprofessionalism. Maybe I can google these guys and get a better get a better um better idea of who the injuries are right now yeah gavin brocious is is one of them uh he, nick marsh was out today um that's another thing um chris uh christian phillips uh he had a i believe you know his i'm familiar with him and, um, I apologize, you guys. Khalil Majid out for the season. Chance Rucker. Uh, Alante Brown was the guy I was thinking of earlier. I apologize for that. Um, so... I don't know when this cycle is going to stop, but it's just driving, it's just driving me insane. I'm sure it's driving you guys insane as well. All these, it seems like every year, just game after game, just mounting injuries. And, you know, that was a, I think that was a significant reason why we had, um, our, you know, disappointing season last year as well. So Anyways, yeah, that will do it for this video. I apologize if this video seems a little bit, you know, um, it's getting late. I can't even think of words that I need to use, but it seems a little unhinged or unprepared. But I did want to make a video. Again, let me know what you guys think about this game. It was, it was a gut punch, that's for sure. Anyways, you guys... Go green, and we'll see you in the next video.